Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. It seems like every week they, it layers up and uh, we're just doing, uh, the, out of the book of Luke, we're doing eight parables in eight weeks. And uh, so we're just kind of reading stories that Jesus, how, that's how Jesus taught. He taught with stories. And uh, so we want to go back and just kind of go, go through the stories. And I, I, I find myself uh, struggling really to, to complete each story every week and, uh, uh, because I, I really like to pull things apart. I like to uh, uh, a more of an expository type of a teaching. But uh, at, at, this, at this moment in time, we're just kind of telling stories, okay? And uh, God is really speaking through those stories. I, I, uh, I, I think it was number four. Uh, I, 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 I knew that message was coming on uh, 10 4 day. I didn't actually know it was on 10 4 day until the night before when I got here on uh, uh, October the 4th. And I, I realized we were pre preaching paradox number four on 10 4 day, which means, okay, God, I agree with you. you know, if you ever got a CB radio or anything, you go uh, 10 4, and that means uh, everything's okay, or come on, let's go. You know, and, I, and so I, uh, I, I've been really just. Uh, drinking in the Word of God off of that message. And so if you wanted to go rewind and go look, go back to paradox number four, and you can see God really begin to uh, shift things, uh, at least in my life, uh, over this last month or so. Today I want to talk to you from Luke chapter 15. And uh, this uh, is probably the first time I've ever, maybe the first, second time, I might have preached twice, three times in my entire life, uh, this message. I, uh, I haven't uh, uh, ever preached it like I'm going to preach it today to you, but I believe that God wants to speak to you. So how many of you believe God wants to speak to you today? Amen? God called you here to speak to you today. And He, didn't, he, he doesn't speak for no reason. He speaks to change something. He, he speaks to us because He loves us. I, I want you to understand that. God is love. If you desire love, you, you really are desiring God. And all of us desire love. Many of us will go looking for love in places we shouldn't go looking for it, okay? And we look for it in images, we look for it in things, we look for it in influence, we look for it in our friends, we look for it in, in uh, uh, places that we shouldn't be at. And uh, often we, we, we don't really find love, we find something, but it's not love. And so if you really want to really have your life changed or impacted, you're going to need the love of God, okay? The love of God will fill you to overflowing, not just a little bit. He won't, he won't just change a little bit of your life. He wants to change all of your life. But we, we really have to be in a co-mission with God, right? We have to come alongside what God is trying to do in our life, and we have to walk with Him. And, and that means we have to surrender, amen? That means I have to give my life. That's where we always start. It's like, man, what's going on with your life? You know, you go to your friend, and they'll be, they'll be like, uh, man, you need, to, you need to give your life to the Lord. And so we do that, but then we pick it right back up and try to do it ourselves again. And really the work that God is to, trying to do in your life, He doesn't need your help. He needs your surrender, okay? And so if we'll surrender to Him, that's, that's a hard thing to do because we don't really want God messing up our life because we got plans, right? And so, and so uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I got some plans. And I just want God to bless me so I can keep my plan going. You know, I want God to bless me so he can, he, can just, he can just make me happy. Come on, that's what we want. You know, that's why we get married sometimes. We get married so that the other person can make me happy. And I wasn't happy when I found her. <laughs> and so I get a big burden on someone that they can never fulfill in my, in, 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 for me. And so real happiness doesn't come from anything other than Jesus. Amen? From that relation, really from that surrendered life from that surrender to Him. Amen? Say surrender with me. Surrender. 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 That's a good word, Pastor Everett. But that's where we have to start today as we read this story. Are you ready? It's the Word of God. Amen? Uh, Luke chapter 15, and we're going to read uh, uh, verses 11 through 32. <laughs> Say, uh-oh. I'm going to read it. I'm just going to keep reading. All right, you ready? Here we go. I'm going to read as fast as I can. In verse 11, ready? We'll read together. If you want to read with me, it doesn't matter what version you have. If you don't have a Bible, the words will be on the screen. But it's important that you read the Word of God because that way at least Pastor Everett knows you read at least one verse out of the Bible in a whole week, okay? But more importantly, we're going to read together because then uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, amen? So my faith will rise just by reading the Word. 
Amen? So let's read together. Ready? Luke 15, verse 11. We're going to go all the way through 32. If I can try, I'm going to try not to, st I'm going to, try not to stop. Okay? So if I, don't, if I don't stop, somebody owes me a pop or something. Okay? Here we go. <laughs> Luke 15, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Verse 13, and, he, and not many days after, I wanted to preach right there. <laughs> and not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. I sound like I'm reading by myself. Verse 14, and when he spent all, there, there arose a mighty famine in, in that land. And he began to be in want. Verse 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose. And verse, I'm in verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son, in verse 21, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22, And the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. In verse 25, Now the elder son was in the field, and when he came, he drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. In verse 26, And he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. In verse 27, And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. Thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Verse 28, And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Verse 29, we're almost done. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither tra transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. Can I say boo-hoo? <laughs> Verse 30, <laughs> But as soon as thy son is come, as soon as thy son as soon as thy son was come, which, thou, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, and hast, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Therefore it was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask that you would make this word come alive in us today, that you would change us today, that you would turn us around, that you would help us to see fresh and new what you want to show us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Say amen with me. Man, that was a lot of reading. That's what I think the most of our reading I've ever done <laughs> for a Sunday morning sermon. Did anybody fall asleep on you? On that sermon? You know, there's a good sermon. That's <laughs> One person fell asleep. Uh, so there, there's a good reason why we should read the Word of God, because we can learn something new. Amen? And sometimes it's important for us to, to, uh, to read the Word of God even if we don't understand it. Right. Amen? Amen? Most of us don't learn by reading the Word. Okay? We learn by seeing the Word. Okay? So we see it lived out in someone else's life, and we go, I want to be like that. And so then we, 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 we discard the learning and we forget about the witness. Amen? So we got to see something in order to be something. That's like, uh, there's some statistical uh, things to back me up on that. You can Google that if you want, but I think it's around 90% area, 85 to 90% of people 
are visual learners. They're not, they, don't, they don't read things and learn stuff, okay? So it's very important that we read the Word of God, amen? But it's also important before you read the Word of God that you ask Him to give you understanding. Say, Father, I don't understand what I'm about to read. I know I'm not going to understand it because I'm not that smart. So, Father, please open my, open my mind. Give me wisdom. Help me to see stuff. And then what will happen is the Word of God will come alive because the Word of God is alive. Amen? And it will jump off the page at you and you'll need to take a note. Okay? So read the Word of God, take notes, and then study the Word of God at a separate time. Okay? So reading is important. I think what's important, we always do first, in, first thing every day. Amen? So when you get up in the morning, read the Word of God. That's important. Amen? Because that's what's going to change your life. Okay? Not Pastor Everett, not, not Sister Joanne, nobody else is going to change your life but the Word of God. Amen? Because you're all stubborn. And so... Yeah, okay. It's just you and I that are stubborn. Those guys aren't stubborn. Okay, so let's look at son number one. Son number one. I just want to look for a moment at son, son number one. And I'm, I'm just going to uh, just only just kind of paraphrase. I'm not going to really dig deep into this, but I wanted to look at son num number one. And I, I, the younger son comes to the father and says, give me, give me my portion. Give me my goods. Give me my stuff. And so we always look at that and we go, I always go, and we, I, this way if I was playing a, a piano or something, I'd go, dun, dun, dun. You know, because he's like the villain in the story. You know, he's the one that, that, that demanded something of God and wanted his things because and he, and he, he wanted control. I mean, maybe you don't know anybody that wants control. Maybe you don't know anybody like that that wants control. But often, I, I think God is, God is a giver, okay? God is the giver. He's the giver of all things, right? So he gives stuff to us, but we want control. So we're asking God for something so that we can consume it on our own. James says it in the... In the uh, in, in there it says, it says we, we ask God for stuff, but we miss it because we want to consume what he's going to give us for our own lust. We, we, we see things, we want things, but we, don't, we can't have them because we're, we're asking wrong, okay? And, and, and often it's a heart thing, uh, it's a heart posture. But, but I, I, I found it interesting in the story that son number one asked for something that was his rightfully, Okay, and God gave it to him, or the father gave it to the son, knowing that, you know, the, the father wasn't dead yet, okay, but he, he gave his inheritance, but pre, uh, before he died, he got his inheritance, and he gave it to his son, not only to the one, but he gave it to both of them, right? He had to, he had to divide it, and the younger son got less than the older, we don't really want to go into dollar amounts, but, but we know that the son got something that was his. Okay, he got it before he should have got it, but he got it anyways because it was his. And sometimes when we pray and ask God for stuff, God will give you things uh, uh, knowing that the, what's going to happen in the end anyways. He already knows. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the father had a pretty good inkling what was going to go on with, with this, this younger son. He probably knew that, you know, he was uh, uh, crazy. You know, he was like rambunctious and he was, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really think it's, uh, I don't think we should ever look at someone that wants something as a, as a negative. I think, I think it's powerful to think about this younger son who really wanted to do something, right? He wanted to go and do something with his life. He was, he was wanting to step out. He was wanting to, to, to maybe go accomplish things. I don't know what he was thinking about building a city or, or becoming a boat maker or whatever. So there, there's something to be said for somebody who's willing to step out and to try something, to, to go, go somewhere that, you know, because some of us always want to be a little bit better than our mom and dad. We always want to do a little bit more than what they did. Well, I want to I be better at something. I want to be greater. I want to do so. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've always wanted to be better than everybody else. I always wanted to be a little, a little bit better. I want to study a little more. I want to pray a little more. I want to, I want to read a little more. I want, to, I want to know a little more than everybody. And sometimes it's important, I think, that we, we have that ability to, to push a little bit, okay? Because if you never want to push, you're just going to be sitting there like this. Oh. I think it's important when we come to church, when the pastor starts preaching, I think it's important to have a notebook out. I think it's important to take a note because you're not going to remember anything I say. You're going to leave here and you're going to go, I don't even know what he said. I don't know what that message was all about. But if you write something down, you'll be changed. You'll be changed. And that's what God really wants to do. He wants to change you. Amen? And so, so God is a giver and and often we, 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 we measure God's response to us by what he gives us. That's what we do. And so we, we, we sometimes are disappointed because he never gives us what we want. But maybe we're never really giving him what he wants. Oh, it's just a little something to think about. And so, and so 
uh, I, 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 just, I just thought it was interesting that, that the son came and asked for something and the father gave. God is a giver. Amen? If, if, if you're not a giver, I challenge you to show me how God has changed your life. Because you can't walk around taking all the time and, and tell me that God is in you. Because there should be something in you that wants to give. There's something about being in a relationship with God. There's, let me just say it like this. I've, I've had relationships with people before, and always I'll find myself saying the same words they say. I find myself having some of the same, uh, I pick up bad habits from people. I don't know, you know, you know, if you hang around someone long enough, you start to look like them, they say, that's why, uh, that's why I look so beautiful, because I hang around Joanne all the time. And so, and so, so there's, there's always going to be a, a, a relationship will change you, right? It changes us. And so, so God is a giver. So should you be a giver. Amen? Even if you don't understand why the Spirit of God in you is saying to give, you must still do what He says. Amen? Because He said. Amen? And, and I, 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 like his, I like to say it like this. If you're in relationship with God, you can't sin without talking yourself into it. Because immediately, as soon as you go to do something, something's going to check in your spirit. And you're going to go, ah, and do it anyways. But if God is alive in you, He knows everything, and He'll check you, and you cannot do what you always did, because God won't let you. But He'll let you do it if you want, just like the younger son. So, so he went, he went, he went, he went. So he, I found out, it's interesting though, that the son, and I don't have enough time to really explode this, but he was treated like he was treating everybody else. That's, what, that's really a good key right there. The younger son got treated the way he was treating everybody else. You know, he was, he was wanting to do what he wanted to do, and he went and did what he did, and they did to him what he was doing to everybody else. If I had a mirror, no. If I had some time, we could all lay down. <laughs> some of our biggest problems in life are not God's fault. Okay, um, they're going to start throwing tomatoes. Okay, God, I said it anyways. And so, but I like, I like in verse 17, he said, when he came to himself. When he, when, he, when he came to himself, when he figured out who he was, when he thought about it for a moment, when he pondered it, when he wasted everything, when he found himself in a situation that he could no longer control in his own, on his own, he came to himself and he thought, I'm the son. I'm a son. And he said, and he said, he said I will arise in verse 18. If you're highlighting in your Bible, that's what, those are words I highlighted in my Bible. He says, I will arise. So, so he came to himself, he said, I'm a son, and he said, I will arise. He said he would do it. And then in verse 20, it says, and he arose. So, so there's a key that we can see right there that we got to come to ourselves and figure out who we are, whose we are, and then we got to decide what the game plan is. Amen? I will go. And then we have to go. Okay? So the steps to getting back to God, getting back into what you're supposed to be doing, always involves action. Right? It involves not just thinking about it. I, I got friends that have said they're going to do something to me for a long time. And they keep doing the same thing they always did. And they never arise and go. Okay? So, so no matter what it looks like in the younger son's, uh, life, I have to commend he was an, a, a go-getter, okay? He would take action. So, 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 so maybe there's just still a little hope for me, okay? No matter where I find myself today, there's still a little hope for me. But, but we, have to, we, have to, we have to think about it. We have to come to ourselves. We got to arise and we have to go, all right? We had to go. Go back to church. I'm gonna, I want to make a call to all, all of you under the sound of my voice, to go tell somebody, you've got to go back to church. You, you're not going to be... You know, I, I, I had the privilege of, of listening to somebody talk to me the other day. And they said, I've been going to church. But I already knew they'd been going to church because of the way they were talking. I was like, are you serious? They're like, I acted surprised, but I wasn't surprised at all because I heard what they were saying. Because I know faith, faith will rise up in you, but it has to be, you, have to, you have to make it an on-purpose trip to church. you got to go to church. you got to go to church, not, not for what you're going to get, but for what you can give. 
And you know what? God is a giver, and so He begins to give. He gives you His Word. He gives you the Word. And that Word is, is, the, is the secret sauce to life. It's the secret sauce to moving forward. You've got to get the Word in you. That's relationship. The Word is relationship with God. It is. I wish I could talk a little longer. So the father responded. He went back to his father. He had, his, he had a speech and he said, he said, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father said to him, he just kissed him and he, he said, you've always been my son and you always will be my son. No matter where you've gone, no matter what you've done, no matter what, what's going on in your life, aren't you glad for the, for, for the love of God over your life, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what you said, no matter what you did with all that He gave you, because he He's given you stuff. He's given you stuff. But no matter what you did, you're always going to be a son. Well, I'm a daughter. I'm a girl. But you're still a son, okay? Jesus died for you. That means you have an inheritance. You know what an inheritance is? Does anybody know what an inheritance is? An inheritance is something you get that you never earned. It's something that you get that you don't deserve. It's something that you get because God is good. Amen? And we have that spiritually, but it ought to manifest in your natural life. Amen? It ought to, it ought, God is love. I wish I could say it loud. God is love. Yes. Have you received it at all? Ever? You can receive it today because he loves you. He loves you. And so the, immediately the father's response is to, he was looking, okay? I could preach a long time about God is looking, okay? God was looking for his son to come back. Not that he needs to look because he already knows the day you're coming back. He knows that yesterday from tomorrow, from, from two weeks ago, from, from what I'm thinking, from my heart, the intent of my heart. He knows it before I even speak the word out. He knows what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say. And he, he set him back in his rightful place. He says, son, you were dead, but now you're alive. You were lost, but now you're found. And I, I, I've been there. Amen? I've, I've, I've walked away from God. I've walked a different path. And I had to come back and ask for forgiveness. And we have to start there sometimes. Forgive me, Lord, for what I did last night. Forgive me, Lord, for what I'm thinking about right now. Forgive me, Lord, that I don't value you enough. Forgive me, Lord, because I have undervalued my own life. I gave my life away to something that I shouldn't have gave my life away to. And now I'm stuck with the consequences of sin in my life. I'm stuck with the broken relationships. I'm stuck with the problems and the trials and the circumstances. I'm stuck. I'm just stuck. And even now, God wants to set you free. He wants to tell you today that you are my son, that I do love you, and that there's still hope for you, and I still have a plan for your life, no matter what it looks like to the world. Amen? And we we, we got to have hope in that. Come on. we got to have hope in that, and we have to put mustard on it, okay? <laughs> Amen? I, I, I don't know why I said mustard, but we got to put, you know, everybody, uh, uh, yeah. we, we got to start reading the Word of God, going to church. we got to start going back to God and asking Him to help us. Amen? Because we are His Son. We are son. Don't undervalue what God puts so much value on. I guess that's the word I want to say to you. All right? Let's, let's allow our... our, our <laughs> here's, a, here's a challenge. Here's a challenge for you. Go to the mirror when you get home, okay? And look straight into your eyes and say the first word that comes out of your mouth when you look in your eyes, if you can even look in your own eyes. Say the first word that comes out. You know, you want to know what I did when I did that? It was, it was an exercise I started doing for myself because, you know, sometimes nobody loves you, but God loves you. Yeah. And inside of you, 
inside my heart, if you dig in there far enough, the love of God should be in there. And so I begin, to, I begin this exercise, and I look in the mirror and I say, I love you. I didn't mean it, though. I said, first thing I said was, you ugly. I said, you're dumb. You're stupid. And those words never came from God. They came from somebody else that told me that. And, and so I had to begin to work on the exercise of telling myself that I have value and that I have a purpose. And I began to, I began to build those things up in my life. Build it up in my heart, Lord. Build it up in my heart. A passion for your, your glory, for your, your name, for, for your kingdom. Amen? See, because if I understood whose I was, yeah. whose I was, I would put value on what God is doing in me. Amen. Amen? And then I would get me some new friends. That's what church is about. It's about getting some new friends who can tell you, man, you look good today. What'd you do? I just, well, I just combed my hair. Good. Amen. Man, you smell good today. You, take, you took a bath. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. You got, got a, is that a new shirt? No, I just uh, turned it inside out. Uh, you know what I mean? Come on, we got to encourage one another. Yeah. We got to, we, that's, this is a safe place. This is supposed to be a safe place. Amen? I don't need to go to a, I don't need to go back to where everybody's looking down on everybody. This is a safe place. It's a place where we love God and we love each other. Yeah. Son number two, son number two. Now his elder son was in the field. He was in the field. He came and drew nigh. He heard music and dancing, and he called one of his servants and asked him, called one of the servants and asked him these things, what these things meant. And he said, Our brother has come home, and your father is loving on your brother. Your father has reestablished him. And the, and the older brother was angry. Angry. The older brother was angry. The older brother was angry. You know, the last two weeks, we preached a message. And at the end of that message, we talked about when a soul is saved, that there's rejoicing in heaven, and that the angels in heaven are singing and rejoicing over a soul being saved. And... I have been saved for 43 years plus. And I have to remember to get excited when someone gets saved. I just want to skip ahead a little bit there because it says, it says the father's response to the older son was to go out where he was. He left the party and he went out where the older son was and he said, son, everything that I have is yours. Everything. Isn't it funny how that the older son had everything, but he was still angry? He was still angry about his brother. He was angry about what God was doing with him. And did you notice God's response was the same? to the younger brother as it was to the older brother. So, so it didn't matter which brother God was blessing, but what did matter is how the one treated the other. I think it's powerful to look at that and go, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but I need change. And so then I look to him for change. But then when I see God dealing with my brother the way I think he should be dealing with me, or doing something I don't think he should be doing, that I look at my brother and I get, I get angry. And that's what we do. We live our life as a Christian, I think, sometimes angry at our brother rather than, than enjoying the love of God. Because we don't believe, really, that God is really going to change me. God, that God really loves me like he loves my brother. Because my brother got a million dollars and I only got ten. I mean, I, I, he's got a fancy car and a, uh, he's, he's got a model wife and, and man, I just got... To... <laughs> I, 
I got what I don't think I need, and he's got everything I think I need. So why would God bless him and not bless me the same? But maybe it has, it's because of my anger. So my, 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 I've said this a lot, but if, we, if we're vertically focused, right, we are horizontally fit. And did you know that across the, the, the distance from the center to the end of the bar, the horizontal bar on each side, these distances are the same, but did you notice that the cross from the horizontal bar to the top of the center one is the same dimension to make a perfect cross? We don't think it is. We think it's shorter, but it's actually the same dimension. I know because I made a few of them. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this, that it's a, it's a sign that I, I must give as much weight to this relationship as I do this relationship. And, and if I don't have this relationship right, these relationships will be dysfunctional. And so God didn't call you to be dysfunctional. He called you to be functional. That's what being a witness really is all about. And so if you want to be a witness of God's power and glory and might, why are you angry at what God is doing with your brother? Can I talk to you just for a moment, just for a moment about distractions? Can I just talk to you for a moment about distractions? Because sometimes we have momentary emotion <laughs> instead of eternal purpose. We have a momentary uh, emotional fit. We have, a, we have a, a, a something that we got to have right now. But God is asking you to look, look at the eternal purpose because, because really, <laughs> there shouldn't be a difference. There shouldn't be a difference. And that's what we see graphically this morning is the difference, how we treat each other here and how we're expecting God to treat us here is always met it seems like with, with dysfunction. And I, I think God is calling us today to a place of functionality. A place of grace and love and mercy, yes, but also out to someone else. Not that I can just have it for my own life, but not ever give it away to someone else. And we got, we got to give away what we have. Matter of fact, we already are. The first son stayed in his right place. He never left. But his attitude was wrong. So he left anyways. Even though he was there, he left. Because he was out of order. The second son got what he wanted, thinking that that, that, that temporary fulfillment would, would cause him to have the identity he was looking for. He was, he was looking for something. But, but what they both found was relationship relapse. They both found relationship. You know what a relapse is? That's where it starts out good and slowly gets deteriorated over time because of unmet expectations. That most of the time the expectations are wrong. <laughs> okay, Pastor Everett. Check your relationship with God this morning. Father, forgive me. Okay, Father, forgive me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. What are you going to do tomorrow? How, how is tomorrow going to be different than today? How, how, how is tomorrow going to be different than yesterday? How, how, what, what's going to change? And I'm going to tell you the only way that change will ever happen for you or for me or for anyone else is if you allow it. I can't force you to change. I, I can change myself. I, I, can, I can say this. If you're in relationship with me and I change, I automatically cause you to have to change. Otherwise... You'll just leave me because you don't like me anymore. I used to like you when you were, you were funny, Pastor Everett. You used to preach and you would make me laugh. And I, I thought it was awesome. And I, I, now you don't make me laugh. Now you just pick on me. And now you just tell, tell me to change and give me this bad word. But, but you know what? We, we have to change. Life is about change. When I was a baby, somebody changed my diaper, thankfully. Amen? That's a sign that you were being changed all along throughout your whole life by somebody else. Right? You're being changed all the time. And you don't like it. I don't like it either. Nobody likes change. But you smell better. 
If I nobody ever changed my diaper, I'd have grown up 54 years old, still have this big old bit of old sack on my butt. I'd be walking around like this. What's that smell? It's Pastor Everett. <laughs> I want to be just like him. <laughs> I want to carry all my crap with me all the time. <laughs> what did he eat? <laughs> It was corn. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, some, don't, don't carry it with you. Don't go into tomorrow with yesterday's stuff. The mercies of God are new every morning. Every morning. Every morning. You know, my relationship with God is so powerful. Uh, I live my life toward God, Right? And I live my life in my perception of God toward me. Right? If I believe God is speaking to me, that's that's good. Right? I want God to speak to me. Don't you want God to speak to Pastor Everett? Yes. Why? Because I want to hear the Word of God. Okay. What are you going to do with it? That's what this looks like between my brother, okay? Okay? That's what this looks like to my brother. And so, so we have the dynamics of all of our relationships. There, there's dynamics in every relationship, but they got to be based on right expectations. Uh, if I was teaching, a, uh, when, when people get married, they come to me and they say, Pastor, will you marry me? Yeah, you got to sit through five sessions with me, though. And I talk to them about the responsibility of a man in the, in the relationship called marriage. I talk to them about the responsibility of the woman in, 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 in their relationship called marriage. I talk to them about their finances. Uh, I, make them, I make them decide who's going to write checks and who, which checking account and how the access looks and, and who's going to do the bills and who's going to do all I, I, I talk to them about sex. Yeah, I do. I talk to them about all of those things because it's important that just because my expectation is one thing, It may not be reality. And so I might be putting a burden on my wife or on my husband, okay, that, that God didn't intend for them to carry. And so, so often, I also make sure they're saved. I ask them, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Why is that important? Because it's important that if, if, if this relationship is broken, i got to go to a one that, that can solve it. I need Jesus. Amen? And if I go to Jesus to fix her, She'll, she, there's two of us against one. I'm leveraging my relationship with God against my wife. And you know what God always does? He don't necessarily change her. He necessarily, most, most of the time He changes me. Because I'm the one that needs to be changed. Amen? amen? You ain't had to live with me. You can say amen to that. Okay? Because <laughs> Pastor Everett needs a change in. Amen? We already talked about it, right? Amen? Dynamics of all relationship are present every day, all day. The dynamics of your relationship with God, the dynamics with your relationship with others, as it's present all day, every day. As a matter of fact, most of us, all of us, struggle with relationships. If it wasn't for relationships, <laughs> I, used, I used to have a pastor friend, he said to me, he said, he said Pastor Ari says, being a pastor is awesome if it wasn't for the people. <laughs> <laughs> come on I just want to preach I don't ever want to say hi or good morning or give you a hug and tell you I love you even though you know what I know come on it's not easy being me it's not easy being you but we have a helper Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit living inside of us amen amen Relationships are the secret sauce to life. Come on. We need relationships. God never built you to be by yourself on an island all by yourself with all your own problems and all your own solutions and all your own... He didn't design you for that. He designed you to be in relationship. How are you doing in that area? Okay, here we go. Ready? I gotta go quick. Ready? Ready? 
Did you ever notice, before I give you a verse, did you ever notice we ask more from others than we're actually willing to do ourselves? You ever, you ever notice that? We'll, 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 we'll ask somebody to do something, but we won't ever do it ourselves. We'll, we'll, I, was, I, was, I was confronted with this, with this, this, uh, uh, this decision this past week. Uh, the laundry in our bathroom had piled up, and it was, uh, uh, we were making a mountain, and it was like uh, about that high, okay? Just a little taller than me, and I had a decision to make, okay? I mean, it was wide and high and tall and deep, okay? And I, I realized that I didn't have any more socks, and I was thinking, I was contemplating, do I go buy more socks, or do I just figure out how to run the washer and the dryer? This was a tough decision for me, because I'm not really good at running washing machines or dryer. Don't ask me to cook you something, okay? I, I go to the kitchen, and I can find a glass, maybe, and a fork. That's about it, okay? And uh, I can do that because I, if I go to Chipotle or uh, one of them places, I come home and I need a fork and I need a glass, okay? That's all I need. I throw all the dishes away in the, the, I can put the fork back in the sink. And you know what? I realized that, that my wife was too busy to do the laundry. And I said to myself, I got a decision to make. So I prayed and I asked God. I said, God, Lord, please send her home to do the laundry because, you know, <laughs> I don't want to learn new things today, Lord. And I know that, I know that she's busy and she's tired and... and and, and, and she came home the first night, and I was like, I was like, I was like, and, she, and I seen her look in her eye, and she looked at the laundry, she said, I got to do that laundry, and I said, yeah, you do, and, she's, and she, she, she went over and laid on the bed, and she went, she was asleep, and I said to God, I said, Lord, what should I do? Should I wake her up? <laughs> and he said, my son, arise and go into the bathroom separate the laundry into colors and put them in the in the in the washing machine yourself as i I said are you sure that's you (laughs) and you know what i found out laundry ain't that hard i can do it except for when uh, joanne woke up she asked me if i did it right and she she went through everything that i was doing wrong because you got to put the cold water on a certain stuff, and you can't have hot water on stuff, and you can't dry stuff too long, and otherwise the colors are going to blend. And I said, I said, woman, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> I didn't say any of that. <laughs> but I had to learn something new. Yes. And guess what happened? I was up till 1 o'clock in the morning doing laundry <laughs> last night. And I was praying, God, don't let me stay up all night because there's something about me that, that when I start something, I have to finish it because I'm a finisher, okay? So I start something, I got finished. So when the, I put it in, I, I even contemplated, should I even put this load in there because I know I'm going to be awake till it's done and I'm going to have to take it out and I'm going to have to put it in the dryer and I got to wait for it to get done because I can't just leave it in a basket. I got to fold it when it's done. It's got to be put away in its place. And I was like, I was like should I even stay awake that long? <laughs> and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, Pastor Ever. <laughs> but I had to learn something new. I've been married for 35 years. And that girl has done my laundry for 35 years and she never complained one time. Well, a few times she complained. But she's always done it. <laughs> one, time, one time she was complaining that she was tired and she wanted the house clean, so I went down and I got her a five-hour energy and a brand new broom. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't actually do that. Well, I don't think I did it. <laughs> I, feel like we're, I, think, I feel like we're having a session. We're making a breakthrough right now. Things are happening in my life right now. I feel, it. I feel a confession coming on. <laughs> That's what change looks like, though. It looks like doing something you never did. Stop asking God to fix it when you're not willing to do anything either. How's God ever going to change anything in your life if you don't commission with Him? If you don't become partner with Him? If you don't let Him live in your heart? If you don't listen? I'll read a verse to you. Ready? Three verses. Mark 12, 29. 
It says, first of all, Mark 12, verse 29. Jesus answered him. He said, the first of all of the commandments is. And I highlight this word, hear. Because then we go, hear, O Israel. But I just want to say, that, I mean, I just, I'm taking a pause at here. Because if we don't hear God, how can you change? How, do you, how can you know? So God, let me hear. Let me hear something today from you. I, I came to church today to hear a word. I came to church today to hear something from you. And, and so he says, the first commandment is hear. 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 The Lord, our God, is one Lord. And I could, can I just get, a, get an amen right there? Because the God I serve is the same God that you should be serving. Amen? And He's one. Amen? So if I'm talking to God and you're talking to God, we should come to church with the same suit coat on. Okay? We should come to church with the same mindset. We should come and worship the same God. Amen? The same God. Not the one that looks like I think He should look or that's doing what I feel like He should be doing, whether it's for me or for them. It's, a, it's the same one Lord. Verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. All of your heart. Oh, you mean that car? You mean that, that other girl? You mean that, the, the, the good old days? The, you, mean, you mean the hope of, of that future? No, all of your heart. That means I don't have anything in between me and God. Nothing. It's just me and God against the world. <laughs> Who's going to win? I'm going to tell you what. God is going to win. He created this place. Every single thing you see, everything belongs to Him. I walk on his word. I, I, I see his word. I, I walk towards his purpose. Amen? There is no devil in hell. The devil could come and sit in this church right now. Oh, don't look at your neighbor right now. He could come sit in this service right now and he'd have no power because the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen? So therefore, I put value on the word over what I see. Amen? Over what I, I think I know all my heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's just the first commandment. And the second is like unto this. You ready? Thou shalt love your neighbor, your brother, just like you love yourself. That's the second one. Most of us don't even have the first one right, so how can we ever have the second one right? We're dysfunction, dysfunction, dysfunction. Surprise, surprise. Okay. <laughs> I was going to talk to you about alignment. Okay. I don't know if you have that. Just put the word up there and then I'll, I'll just, I'll, I want to talk to you about alignment, but I'm not going to talk to you about alignment. Okay. I'm going to be done right now, but I just want to say this. Just this one thing, okay? <laughs> alignment, alignment happens when the Father and me and me and my brother all are on the same page. Alignment. And alignment, I'm going to talk to you about it next week, maybe if the Lord lets me, but alignment is, is where you have security, joy, and success. Okay? And if you're going to do anything for God, you, you need to have alignment. Okay? And so, so I'm looking, this is what I'm looking for. I'm asking, actually. I'm going to turn this off right now because I'm going to get distracted. Because this is what God wants to say right now at this moment. I'm looking for alignment. I'm looking for God to touch me. I'm looking for God that the same God that touched me to touch my brother. And I don't care what he does, what it looks like, okay? It's not going to look right to me no matter what I think. 
but I'm going to have joy that God is working in his life. Amen? I'm going to love my brother even if he don't love me. I'm going to, I'm going to come into alignment because I trust that God is just as good for me as he is for him. And, and that, my friends, is enough to release. We can release it all to him and come to this simple thing called surrender. So let's stand together. Let's stand together and let's pray. Let's pray. I, I want you to, if, if you can, I know we got stuff you feel comfortable enough. If you're sitting next to somebody, just put your hand on their shoulder right now. And just say this, say this with me. Brother, I love you. I, I love you like God loves me. I pray that our relationship would be rich just like it is with God so that we can do the work God has called us to do in the earth today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we are your kids. I thank you, Lord, for changing our diapers today. I thank you, Lord, for changing us. I thank you, Lord, that you are the king and the Lord. and the, you're, you're sit on a throne in heaven, but you just didn't stay there. You came as a baby. And you died on a cross. And you live inside of our heart. And so, Father, today, we make you Lord, Savior, and King of our heart, of our life, of our circumstances. And Father, we ask you to change us today. Change us. Help us to change our mind. We let you have, the, we give you authority to change our heart. And we just thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I want to say this, change has already happened in you. And if you believe that, if you believe that, your life will never be the same. You have to surrender to it though, okay? So when you leave this place, do not do what you always did and expect a different result. Amen? But this is my challenge to you. If God has changed you, he has. Go tell somebody else what great things God has done in your life. And allow, allow them the opportunity to come back to this place so that they, their lives can be changed. So that their lives can be turned around just like yours. Amen? And I want to tell you this. The relationships that we have in this place are going to change the world because God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise things of the world. Amen? He will raise up a king from among the people. Not someone that's too big for you, but a king from among the people to establish his kingdom and his work especially in these last days. So ex I am expecting, I, I see it in the spirit. I see a great mass of people that are coming, that are hungry, that are, that are gonna change, not just Rockford, we're changing, we're, we're gonna change the world. God, this is the last days, okay? And the job we have to do is important enough. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus loved everybody in the, in the world. He said, he said, go get a soul. That's what makes me happy. Go get a soul. Go tell him. Go be a witness. That's what makes him happy. So you want to make your father happy. Stop trying to ask him to make you happy. Start living. <laughs> I, I, can't get back. I can't get past it. If you are alive spiritually, you have, you have to flow 
in, in that same, you have to, there's three parts of us, right? There's our mind, there's a body, there's our spirit. When we get saved, our spirit comes alive. Otherwise, I'm, I'm two thirds, right? A third is 0.33333 to infinity. Two thirds, a mind and a body is 0.66666 to infinity, which is the number of man, 666, which is the spirit of the Antichrist. Anytime, anytime uh, you're trying to do something on your own, it's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's not, it's not the spirit of God working. So when you try to do stuff on your own, that's what we fight. We fight it every day because we're trying to get God to get us to do this, trying to get this brother to do that. And, 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 and the answer is not trying. The answer is letting. So when we get saved, the Spirit comes alive, we are whole. You, you're different than all of the world. You're different than all of the world. Don't go act like the world and try to come to church and repent. Oh, Father, forgive me. No, you ain't doing your job. Don't go out there and act like the world. That's dysfunction. And God is tired of dysfunction. God, God I, I believe, I really believe that COVID-19 was, was allowed to touch the earth so that those who thought would have to bow down to those who are. And this is the day. This is the third anniversary. I was thinking about this this week. Three, there's some things that happen when you talk about three. New beginnings, new life. You know, Jesus was in the tomb and on the third day he rose again. And I'm going to tell you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's an alignment that's happening right now. And God is about to change everything in our life. Amen? I don't believe that this year, will, 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 that we will finish this year out the way we started this year. I believe that we will end this year and, and all of our life will change. My, my life will not look the same by the end of this year. I believe that with all my heart because I believe that's the word of the Lord. And, and the, word, the word, God is not a, a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent did he not say it will he not bring it to pass the answer is always 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 so i'm going to ask you i prayed for you but if you need prayer i i i just feel this by the power of the lord right now i feel like he's asking you are you willing to make a change today and if you are I want you to come up, to, come to the altar. I'm going to open this altar up, okay? And I know we got to stay separated, all that stuff. I'm not living in fear, but I'm going to tell you this. If you need to put a mask on, that's fine. I'm not going to look down. If you want to do it right at your chair, where you're at. But I don't want you to leave this room without asking the Lord to align your life. Align your mind. Align your heart. Align your relationships. Make it right with Him today. Amen? Amen? Come forward if you want. Do it in your chair if you want but do it, okay? God bless you. God bless you.